Yeah. How do I look, Brendan? What? Do I look sufficiently shaken up by the movie? You, look, you just look like you have two pillows on you. Give me a third one. So we went ahead and watched The Conjuring 2 tonight. It's pr 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 it was spooky. great. I did not like that movie. <laughs> At the beginning, we're introduced to the to two of the main characters in the film being, um, I don't remember their last names, but at least one of them was named the, Ed. The Warrens. Um, the, the Warrens. Warrens. The Warrens, that, that was their names. Um, in Amityville, performing a seance and checking up on a demon nun. There's, there's the chick. I don't remember her name. We just talk Dude. about Ed all the time. There's the chick. <laughs> Edit it in and post. <laughs> uh, that would that would be like. She the, could sense the spirits. She could sense spirits, and then there was Ed. That was just like moral support. What do we get to next? So then we're like. We cut to the family. Who, uh, we cut to like, London. Yeah. And. Uh, there's this nice little London montage which happens in literally like every movie or TV show when London they go to London. <laughs> and All what these happened Big after? Ben, Queen. Yeah, so the, the kids are coming out of school. The little, like the 11 year old girl, her name's Janet, is like her friend is smoking. Smoking's bad. And the teacher catches them. She also smokes. One thing that they that brought, was necessary, apparently. One thing that they brought up um, when they were when Janet was speaking to her friend outside of the schoolhouse, um, they what did they call it? Did they call it a demon board or a ghost board? Yeah, the like ghost ghost board. I think it was ghost board. Ghost, ghost board. board. They called it a ghost board, which is in essence a Ouija board. They get they get no answers. They basically just sit there and. They place the Ouija board, the ghost board, underneath the, underneath Janet's bed, and it's basically forgotten about for about 12 seconds by the audience. Yeah, and like, if you, if, what I realized immediately though, like, if you know anything about Ouija boards, the rule is, is if you don't say goodbye, you are inviting spirits into your house. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's the problem right away. Diagnosed. <laughs> you diagnosed the diagnosed. Uh, official. <laughs> official uh, Diagnosis from the uh, doctor. The, the doctor of the house. Yeah. So she sits up oh, in bed. She sits creepy. up in bed in the middle of the night, and she starts speaking immediately after she lies back down. No, it's the next day. It's the next day. It's yeah. the next day. Exactly. She's lying down in bed, and her sister's lying down in the bed, like across the room from her, and she hears talking, and Janet is thrashing around, saying, "No, no, no, like." Leave me alone, leave us alone. And she starts to take on a second voice. This voice being a very, very spooky old man voice. My father called me Ed just like everybody else. <laughs> Come on, Bill, you're not a psychiatrist and I'm not here to talk about my father. Let's get down to business, what do you say? Hmm? Why don't you just leave these people alone? Okay. Um, several things can be said about this movie, technically. Um, the camera work in this movie so is good. fantastic. It's beautiful. It makes me hate how beautiful it is because it's all dark and depressing. Say something. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's <and> Dylan. <laughs> Dylan, what did you like about the movie? Wow. <laughs> There are a lot of really awesome shots in the movie. Following the family through so, the house. Uh, re re retake this, uh, <laughs> cut, just cut, cut this entire thing out, right? It's no, going yeah, in yeah, just because. No, don't do it. Uh, yeah, that's gone. It's gone it's for gone. sure. <laughs> gone for good. Gone for sure. Off the books. Um, <laughs> moving the to sarcasm <laughs> in your voice. Feels like I'm gonna get embarrassed in a couple of days. The camera work throughout the house is really great. You follow you follow every character into the rooms that they spend a lot of Some time really with, into their bedrooms, stuff like that. The camera's going through windows and yeah, into different rooms really and following nice, people through shots. walls. 
really nice long shots. It really is. It, it's incredible. There's this really beautiful shot where uh, Janet is downstairs in the armchair. It's one of those times that she's woken up there. Uh, her mom comes to get her. It's nighttime. And they go up the stairs. And then it pans to the window. And the window is like, it's bright, it's daytime, it's raining. It pans back out to the couch that's directly in front of the window. And Janet's there, like, watching TV, drinking juice. It's freaking fantastic. It's so beautiful. Sorry, <laughs> did I take something you were gonna say? No. You gotta get involved, <laughs> man. You gotta get involved. <laughs> How about you start us off with things that we 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 didn't like talk as about, much about Talk about movie. Billy only talking about biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> I just talk about so him being awkward. a bad child actor. <laughs> Can I just, like, not... Hey, do you want to tag out? <laughs> Tap out? Who are you tapping out are you, to? Are you tagging out? <laughs> this movie does a lot of things very well and very right. Um, but as far as the acting goes, there is one that we unanimous, unanimously agree is rather garbage. Mm -hmm. Biscuits. Yeah, Billy. <laughs> Billy, I mean... You a, said lot of, a lot of children's performances... You've, you, you've said this before, you've yes. said this before, that um, people will counter back with, oh, he's just a kid, he's mm -hmm. just a kid, but the fact of the matter is, he is a kid who is also an actor. Yes. He needs to be held to a standard for the movie. Yes. And, um, I mean, even just looking at other movies, The Hunt, mm -hmm. that little girl She's was great. incredible. Yes. Yeah. Child actors are hard to come by, though. Mm -hmm. Like, good yeah. child and actors. I can, and I can, yeah, I can true. definitely admit and that, but at the same time... Particularly, like... I guess from a parental standpoint, I mean, I guess I wouldn't know, but I know that a lot of parents wouldn't want their kids participating in that's a really true. dark horror movie. It's, it, yeah, so yeah, it, that just kind of like lowers the, the pool yeah, of children it, it they kinda, have to choose from. kind of slims that the... Sounds really creepy. <laughs> the pool of children. They just, go, they just like go to a, they go to like a public swimming pool and they're like... <laughs> You're acting oh. like throwing little Whose kids parents like throwing aren't balls. Around? Little, little, little kids like throwing balls at each other, and they're trying to pick which one can like last underwater the longest. <laughs> they're like, "Wow, that kid. Hey, kid, kid, what's your favorite food? Hey, you want to come to an audition? Kids, dude, you're tired. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And, like his his acting wasn't the best, but the parts that were focused around him were still very well executed mm -hmm. and still made them really interesting to watch and freaky to watch, particularly the scene in the tent <clears throat> and fire truck. <laughs> yeah. True. What during that scene though, when you, when we're walking through the house, you're introduced to a lot of elements that get moved throughout the movie. The main one being the. <laughs> you got a problem? It's good. The main one being, I don't even know what kind of a toy you would call that. Um, basically, Billy has it's a, a serious. It's a, it's a Zoe Oh, has yeah, a serious but... speech impediment, and so he uses this little thing but, but, with his sister. The biscuit. <laughs> that he has the biscuits. Um, <laughs> so it's a zoeotrope, you said. Zoeotrope. So he uses the zoeotrope with his sister Janet to kind of cure, yeah, or not work, cure, work but it. work on his speech impediment, mm -hmm. his stutter, and it tells a story of it's the, creepiest, the crooked man. The creepiest nursery rhyme known to man. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There is a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He had a crooked house. Some, some, something about a crooked, crooked smile. Something got crooked and things. Crooked got dog, crooked. crooked cane, crooked everything. Crooked There's been multiple dick. like horror <laughs> movies and horror... <laughs> One of my one of my things about this movie is that um, we know I noticed it specifically this time seeing it. I've seen it four or five times now because I think it's great. But one thing that I've noticed progressively is that the first act and the second act feel like two completely different movies. They really do. Like the first act is really really great. I it's some of the most effective horror I've seen in the last ten mm -hmm. years. And then the last half. 
very generic. Yeah. It kind of dies down a bit. It, yeah. it starts to follow the very specific formula laid out yeah. by I the feel, horror formula. I feel like the problem with that, though, would be is that they like they kind of like played all their cards in the first act. They're like, mm-hmm. this is a cool scare. This yeah. is a cool scare. This is a like, cool scare. Uh, this is a cool scare. And you're like, okay, oh, wait. Oh, mm-hmm. ugh, and like, what do we do now? What do we do but now? But then like in the, sec- the second act, it's like... Right. Cool scare! Yeah, there's like two. Cool scare! <laughs> for for yeah. example, as far as that goes, um, in that scene where Janet is sitting on the couch, mm. uh, the TV starts acting up, she goes up to it, she turns the TV off at some point, and you see the man sitting in the chair in the back. There's a lot that happens in it. There's a lot that they do right and a lot that they do wrong. I mean, the characters aren't exactly. They don't. They, really they're not interesting. Mm-hmm. Like the first, like I said, the first half is when all the good stuff happens, yeah. and that kind of keeps you from saying, "Oh wait, I don't care about any people." But then that generic second half comes into play, and like we were saying at the moment when they're leaning their faces against the door, and we're like, "We don't <laughs> care about this." They're like romance through a door. <laughs> Stop it! What are you doing? Uh, I was gonna do the cheek to cheek. You animal! I feel like. <clears throat> Another problem with the second act is like they try to like do a whole bunch of like character development in the second mm-hmm. act. They really do. True. Like, like all like the relationships in the family when the the <clears throat> Warrens are trying to get them more close as a family, and then there's like all these other characters that they've added in, like the lady yeah. who thinks paranormal stuff is like just a fraud, yeah, and the other guy, and then um, yeah, and, they and then way just like the Warrens themselves, just like <laughs> the- love you, I love you too. I saw you die. I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> the biggest issue that I personally had with this movie is how awkward the placement with the Warrens actually is. Mm. It is You know awkward. what I mean? They're very present at the the beginning of the movie is all about them. Like sure. the first 10 minutes of the movie and then they, is all about them. Then they disappear for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Then they're shown again in a talk show, disappear for another 15, 20 minutes, and then they're reintroduced yeah. again. And it's un- I guess it's understandable why they did that, mm-hmm. but as far as the ca- character development stuff goes, if they had just taken that character development and just done like yeah. 10 or 15 minute scenes switching between Warrens and the family yeah, yeah. and Warrens that, and the family, that easily especially. Could have been done. Or, I, you know, that just made me think. What I think it would have been really cool to see just their perspective. Like, not even cut between the family in that first act. The first time you see the family, maybe, is like when they get to the house. I mean, that would have been kind of neat, you know? Yeah. They, they, they would have to, like, cut for, like, a big, mm-hmm. large chunk of backstory. Yeah, but... there would be there would be a lot of cuts made, and they would probably have to actually try to do characters, yeah. or it would be very bland, but I think that would work better. So, one of the, one of the, there are two, not to give anything away, but <laughs> it, it does, it it's does. A spo- it's a spoiler review. It's a, yeah. it's a sp- it's a spoiler, but it comes up very early in the movie anyway, so it's not too much of a spoiler. The the demon nun. The demon nun. So there's like there's two main horror elements. There's the demon nun, and then there's the the crooked man, the old man. Mm-hmm. Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and the demon nun uh, has just been like following this lady from the beginning. Like she was. This is the the spectral she saw in the first scene. Specter. Spe- specter. What? She said, she said this is the spectral she saw. You know what she oh, said? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> is that a James Bond reference? So the the demon nun lady uh, shows up in Ed Warren's dreams one night. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, I'm an artist. I painted you this <laughs> and painted this picture of the demon nun lady. And it's already like a decent painting. It's still... It still kind of gives you the creeps. It's still got a creepy vibe. Um, and then somehow they decided to hang that up on their wall in the, like, their office or study or whatever. She like comes into the study and it's nowhere to be found, but there's a painting on the wall. And you're like, oh boy. And you're like, oh no. It, it is used very, very effectively. Cool. And Door so, closes behind her and everything. Um... And like the whole room goes black. Mm-hmm. 
And this this picture itself is already like kind of shrouded in darkness, but then it just gets blacker. And the 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 demon nun lady, when you see her in person herself, she's just like, like she, she's her, wearing a habit. She's yeah, she's wearing a habit, but it just seems like kind of like unnaturally dark at called? the same time. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's a nun's habit. That's a habit. Uh-huh. Yes. What? That's the weirdest word to call it. <laughs> because you wear it habitually. I don't know. Maybe. <sighs> I'm sorry, that's just the weirdest thing. No, it's called a habit. To cut you off. That is what it's called. (laughs) Because it's the only sign she can see of this demon ghost lady being here. And it'll the closer she gets... You can see its eyes. You can see its eyes in the painting, which is like the one aspect like missing from the painting. Mm -hmm. And they're like... like glowing green almost. (gasps) They are a very, very, very light color, and it offers fantastic contrast. It's so... It's such good contrast. Mm -hmm. And the, the differences between... Like the way that the the demon lady's like facial features look anyway, and the painting are just so, like, they're so close. Mm-hmm. They're not quite right, so you can tell when it's a person and when it's not the when it's the painting. But <clears throat> it's still it's still freaky because it's like, is she there? Mm-hmm. Is she there? And then there's uh, this one moment. What happens in between that? It's, it's like, like well, before the shadow thing. Happened. It's like um. Well, she turns the lights on, and she's like, oh, yeah, it's just the yeah. painting. Uh-huh. And then it turns the lights off, and all the windows close. Yeah. And then there's one light on the floor or something, and then that's when and it casts shadow a shadow. starts walking and across so you, the room. Yeah, you ca- see this. You, you go that's ahead. That's cool. It, ca- it casts the shadow of the nun on the wall, and it slowly, in a, oh, it's so intense, walks around the room until it lines up exactly with the shadow. Then from out behind the painting, creepy white fingers with like (gasps) black nails come out from behind and it grabs onto it. And then she just emerges from the wall and runs and her mouth opens in the the painting. painting. And (laughs) she has disgusting gums and nasty teeth. No, she has this like huge jaw that like dislocates and- Just like, But around this time is when the movie starts to lose touch with me. Yeah. It becomes pretty awkward it's, yeah, at this it's point. Really, really, it's when Ed and Lorraine get to the house. It's Lorraine. Lorraine! There you go. Oh, you were trying to figure that out? Yes, we asked you and you yeah, said, oh, gonna... no. Yeah. Oh. We just talked about Ed all the time yeah. as the chick. <laughs> Edit it in and post. <laughs> Cleared of all charges. But yeah, when they get to the house, it's when it kind of goes, because that's yeah, when it's it, that generic. Yeah, thing. it goes very generic. But at the same time, there during that generic thing, yeah. they, they d- still do things that make it seem very cool. For example, um, they're interviewing Janet, and they sit, and she says, he says that he won't talk unless you guys are turn are, around. are turn around and not looking. And so they turn around, and they're sitting there, and she starts talking, and in and the background... In this entire, this entire scene, the shot one. is just focused on Ed's face, yeah, and he's asking the questions, and he can't see... Uh, you can't see Janet at all in the back. I mean, you can, She's but it's blurred. very, very, it's very blurred, blurred out. Yeah, and then and it slowly starts to become the old man. That's yeah. a cool scene. It's a really very cool, scene. cool scene. It's a very creative scene. Because in, in a lot of ways, many people would have shot it either showing her become the goat ghoulie ghost, or just... Like, a, a la Warcraft Medivh. Yeah, or, mm-hmm. or maybe from like behind the ghost and showing the backs of them while it's talking. But that's it's a creative scene that... Um, there's a lot of moments in the movie like that where I'm just like, I have to think about them for a minute. How did you, wait, how did this happen? How did you do that? And that's what I like about it. Like, a lot of people that I've seen talking about this movie were, are, are saying that, oh, it's a show offy movie for James Wan. He just wants to show off. And, and I can admit that there's a couple shots where I'm like, okay, you didn't have to do that. Like, the scene where it kind of flows through the whole house. It's like, you didn't need to do that. And maybe that's a little show offy, but I still like it because it's still, because it like didn't really add to it, but it still no. kept a really nice flow. Yeah. To the movie. And, and when, when movies like lights out or don't breathe or hush are coming out that do nothing new in camera work, that's refreshing to see. Even if it may be a show offy thing to do, it's still refreshing in that it's, they're trying 
They're yeah. trying something. So that would be, that's pretty much our, our end. That's end to day one of our... Uh, oh. Eight out of ten. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're giving and it an eight, Dylan. Dylan gives I, it an eight. <clears throat> I thought the shots were just amazing, so... Yeah. Eight out of ten They're for good. Dylan. Very nice. You heard it here first. Dylan eight. gives it an eight. Even though he... <laughs> why, did you, why did you do it with two fours instead of a five and a three? But yeah, so let's see what happens next time. Please watch us. Okay, bye. Thank you.